presenting some joint work with um, Paul Hudak, Danya Quick, and Dan Winograd Court on real-time interactive music in Haskell. So what I'm going to do, this is a demo, but uh, I'm going to walk you through a quick introduction of what Uterpia is, what we've been working on. I'm going to talk about some recent problems that we faced in trying to get this demo to work and the solutions we came up, and then we'll have some fun demos for you. So a little bit about what we're working with. We're doing uh, functional reactive programming, which you all probably have heard about by this time. Uh, and we've seen it used in these talks for time-varying systems, uh, particularly in graphics. It works really well for that. There is some work with uh, systems programming, uh, network programming. Um, but it turns out this abstraction of time fits music really well. It's very convenient. It lets us think about uh, the real content of the music rather than uh, figuring out how we actually want to get it from the input to the output. Um, another nice thing is it... Um, provides us with simple and concise code. Uh, so this works well in a classroom setting and also works well for musicians who may not be super familiar with coding but would like to get into computer music. So uh, this is important because in music we want to have rapid prototyping. We really, as soon as we have a musical idea, we want to be able to express it. And typically when we're working at a piano or on our instrument, we can do that immediately. Uh, but we want to reduce that turnaround time as much as possible when we're working with computer music. So <clears throat> to that end, we've built Uterpia. Um, and Uterpia is a descendant of Haskor. This is uh, work that Paul Hudak had been taking the lead on. It's been a project in the work for many years. And it's an arrowized FRP system. It's an embedded domain-specific language in Haskell. And uh, so far, we have real-time MIDI production, so you can do lots of interesting computation with that. We have some nice built-in MIDI I.O. that's all built into Haskell. We can do waveform manipulation and synthesis. We're working still on uh, making that waveform stuff real-time. We're not quite there. Uh, but this work that we're presenting today is one step closer to that. Uh, so just a quick... Um, little thing about what we've been working on with Uterpia. Uh, as you saw on Tuesday's keynote, this book, um, The Haskell School of Music, um, is nearing its publication uh, online, so to speak. Uh, it's something that we've been using at Yale for a number of years in the Haskell computer music classes. Um, there's both a MIDI section and a waveform section, two different classes that we've been running. Uh, we have a nice community, uh, or at least a space for a community, at uterpia.com. Uh, so we need you guys to join us on uterpia.com and get started uh, working on this. Um, and we also have a physical space called the Uterpia Studio that we've been using for um, actually testing out how well Uterpia works with live musicians. So we bring musicians into the space, we have them playing their instruments, playing on the piano, whatever it is, and kind of see what we can come up with. Uh, in fact, if any of you are around New Haven in November, we're going to be hosting a, a computer music concert in this space. So feel free to keep an eye on the uterpia.com website for updates about that. So um, one thing we're interested in is real-time interactive music. And you see this a lot recently in computer music. Uh, live coding has been a huge thing. Uh, so some of you might know the Haskell library title, uh, which is really fantastic. It just is essentially live coding in GHCI, but lets you do some interesting stuff. There's some other stuff. Uh, Super Collider, which I think we're going to see some work on later today, uh, which is a functional language, but sort of has a more imperative spirit to it. You send commands to a music server, and it executes them. Of course, there's also C sound which uh, it's written in C, but if you really want to, you can do some uh, live interactive stuff with that. So what we would like is to have this in FRP, too. Uh, the problem is Uterpia had poor support for this. Uh, and really, one of the main problems came from a naive connection to a GUI can lead to um, high audio latency because there is a rate differential. So you can imagine if you have a graphics um, graphics module running at 60 frames a second, but then you have your 
Uh, music, for example, MIDI generation, that might be running at 200 ticks a second. Now, naive connection is going to be forcing these both to have the same data rate, and obviously this is going to slow you down a lot. Um, the other issue that we see with this naive connection is that when you build in the GUI or whatever your secondary module into the main system, that connection is very interconnected with uh, your code base. So it becomes very difficult to change the GUI because the code is everywhere. It's not well separated. So we'd like to modularize this. Um, so to that end, we came up with something of a concept of media modules. It's not quite a full theory yet. It's something we're working on. Uh, we have a little presentation coming up on that at the International Computer Music Conference uh, in September. But the basic idea is we're going to put each of our different media types on a different thread. This way we're not going to get any bottlenecks, even if the rates are varying. So we can imagine if we connect two GUIs that uh, might be just rendering as fast as possible, but we don't know exactly how fast, we're not going to get any in interference. The other thing we would like to see with media modules, again, this is a concept more than a fully fleshed out theory, but we would like to have something that is uh, abstraction agnostic. So we'd like to be able to connect an arrowized FRP language like Euterpia with a non-arrowized um, language or two arrowized, either way. We want it to work uh, regardless of how um, your libraries are set up. So we made an attempt at a universal FRP API. Uh, and this is just one of the first iterations, so we're interested in what you guys have to think about this. So what we're going to do is provide a arrow I.O. Uh, and this is basically an embedding of um, some I.O. action into an arrow. And uh, we have the I.O. auto, and this is, for those of the, you that are familiar, the Kleisley arrow is just the basic embedding that is going to put your arrow in the, uh, your IO monad into the arrow context and the automaton is going to let us sample that over and over again. Uh, so now when we want to use this asynchronously within another module, uh, we can have an async C IO. Uh, and this is going to take an initialization and terminal IO action and then continually run the IO auto uh, signal function that we have. Uh, so we built this into a library called UISF, uh, which Dan has been working on for the past couple of years. It's a really great arrowized FRP library for graphics. Um, I'd highly recommend checking that out. Uh, so when we want to connect Euterpia and UISF, all we need to do is embed uh, a MIDI out widget into UISF. So UISF has this concept of widgets, which are basically uh, different things you can plug together, which may or may not have a graphical representation. In this case, the MIDI out is going to be taking our uh, Euterpia's native output MIDI um, and deliver MIDI and embedding it into a lift IO. So this is going to bring our uh, Euterpia's IO actions into something that uh, makes sense in UISF's context. Uh, so now with that, we can make an async MIDI inside of uh, UISF, and we're going to run it asynchronously. So, uh, right, I mean, without getting into too many details, we're lifting our signal function, which is computing the music, and we'll be, the music is going to be coming out in M data and sending that through our MIDI out. Uh, we have a thread delay here just so we don't eat up a lot of computation. Uh, we may not need this to run as quickly as possible uh, because you actually need to hear the music rather than just compute it. So uh, if that made sense, great. If not, then it's OK too. But we'd love to talk more about this. Uh, I'll show you some demos now um, about what we've been working on. So uh, the first thing we have is UISF and Euterpia together. So let's see if this works. OK. So uh, what we have here is um, this is actually using some work from Danya. Uh, she had presented a paper at Farm 
uh, a couple of years ago, um, and she just finished her dis dissertation on Kulita, which is a composition tool um, written in Euterpia. Uh, I just want to turn this down a little bit. Um, <laughs> Uh, so what's going on here is that we have a UI uh, that is connected to your Terpia. And you can see we have a little counter here which seems to be working pretty well. Um, and as I input different uh, MIDI events, we can change the key. Uh, so right now our MIDI, uh, our, our uh, MIDI input is just based on the hardware keyboard. We could have brought uh, MIDI device, but we forgot to. Um, so we can play this on here, and what it's doing is a non-trivial computation of figuring out, given our current key and given the new key, uh, which it's inferring from the notes that we're playing, how do we get from one point to another? Uh, and if you're familiar with music, there's a number of different ways to do this. We could just transpose whatever we're playing into the new key. But that doesn't sound smooth or natural. Uh, it's not good voice leading, as it's called. So I'm not sure if you'll be able to hear it, um, but you can hear that we're not just jumping from one chord to another. We're actually computing some smooth uh, transition. And this is using um, Danya's uh, probabilistic temporal graph grammars, which basically means it sounds good. Um, <laughs> So you can put some drums in here. Um, and uh, you can speed it up to make it sound fancier. And we shouldn't be getting any delay, which is a nice thing. Uh, you can add even more bass. I actually don't know. So you can play with this. Um, the interesting part about this is that oops, sorry, wrong way. Uh, the interesting part about this is that we originally, in our first iteration of this, we were getting um, latency around the area of 200 milliseconds, uh, which is totally unacceptable in a MIDI environment. Uh, by splitting, by simply splitting the graphics interface and the music computation onto two separate threads and making this nice little bridge in between them. Right now, the latency we get here is around the area of 10 milliseconds, uh, which is on par with a lot of um, professional proprietary software for MIDI development. Uh, so that was a very nice thing. Um, I'll show you the other demo here. Um, so yes, that was uh, UISF. Um, we also have uh, another approach using Alaria and Euterpia. Uh, it's the similar idea of media modules, but it's not, the code has not been quite as developed. Uh, so we won't show you the code yet, uh, but you can talk to us about it if you'd like to see the guts and come up with some good ideas. But Alaria is a non arrowized um, FRP library for graphics. Um, so I took an existing uh, breakout game that was written in Alaria and connected it to some simple Euterpia code, so as each brick breaks in this game, oops, sorry, we're getting sound playing out. Uh, so this is not very much fun and it's not very interesting, uh, but it is working. Um, yeah. <laughs> uh, so this is a couple of the things that, make, that are made possible by this. Uh, Right now, this is running at some sufficient number of frames per second. Uh, uh, without this media module implementation, we were getting really terrible performance. It was not even playable. Uh, so it seems like this is some sort of good idea. Uh, but uh, there's still a lot more to be done on this. Um, we need to. Uh, really formalize this media module API um, and figure out how we can make different media libraries interoperate easily and efficiently. There's a lot of work going on right now with FRP. It's a very popular thing, but everybody seems to be, every, um, every year at ICFP, there's a new 
oh, this is the new way we should be doing FRP, and this one is so much better than the old way. Uh, and everybody else was wrong before me. So, um, and that's fine, that may be true, but uh, we, these ex libraries still exist, and there should be some way to interconnect them regardless of the abstraction that we're using, um, and regardless of the new abstractions that will inevitably come next year. Um, we, so we'd like to retrofit um, some FRP libraries uh, into this media module system. Uh, so if any of you have uh, FRP systems that you're working on right now, we'd love to uh, work on those and see how your abstraction can fit into this um, section. Uh, so, yes, um, right now we have UISF and Uterpio working well together. Um, and they're retaining this uh, pure functional style that was sort of the goal of the whole project. Um, this is a great tool for teaching functional computer music. Uh, in particular, being able to make interactive computer music uh, is important. Uh, kids get excited by music and they get excited by graphics, but when you stick them together, they feel like they're actually making something worthwhile. Uh, so, yeah, we'd like you to all play with the system and uh, see what you can come up with. Uh, you can check out our uh, two uh, websites, uterpio.com and the Haskell site. And these things are both easy to install. Uh, so before I close, I want to just play a little bit more with the demo so everybody can uh, see all the cool things that we can do with this. I see. Okay. Um, so just in the interest of giving you the full experience. Oh. Yeah. Well, maybe I won't give you the full experience. <laughs> well, that's fantastic. Yeah. I think probably we should not try and do any more demos. <laughs> this one more time. is it doesn't work so well on this hardware keyboard, but you can actually input a number of different notes, and they'll show up on this input tab right here, and I'll try and figure out what the key is that belongs to these uh, different notes. Uh, so it will only show up for a moment. Um, I think if I turn measure mode on, it'll work a little bit better. So after I input all these notes, it will say current, and it will refer from uh, this tab right here what the key is that it thinks we're playing in. So if I really mash the keyboard, it says this is C major. Um, whether or not that is something that you believe is questionable. Uh, but these are really very non-trivial musical algorithms, very difficult. Uh, and it seems like this isn't getting in the way of the performance, so that's a really nice thing. Um, can get a little repetitive, though, so that's enough of that. Uh, yeah, so if you guys um, have questions or um, would like to work on this, please let us know. We'd be happy to work with you. Yeah. Right. Exactly. So, yeah. Uh, so the question was actually, was there? Sorry, I don't want to interrupt you. How's the latency when you actually do synthesis? Oh, right. So the question is, how is the latency for waveform synthesis versus MIDI synthesis? So these are two separate problems. Uh, on one hand, we can be uh, creating MIDI events and then sending them to an external MIDI synthesizer. 
So in this case, uh, Microsoft actually has a built-in MIDI synth that we're sending uh, a mu abstract music value to. And that's sort of what Uterpia excels in. On the other hand, we might actually want to synthesize the sound ourselves, so a WAV file or an MP3. Um, right now, that does not work very well. Uh, we have one small demo uh, where we were able to control, we made a small mixer, so we were able to play back uh, some WAV files and control some parameters on those. Uh, so if you're using existing WAV files and you'd like to play those, that's not so bad. Right now, we're struggling a little bit with the actual synthesis procedure. Um, so we're trying to keep everything in Haskell. Uh, so we want to do including that waveform synthesis within the Haskell environment. And so far, we haven't had a whole lot of luck with that. It's still kind of a work in progress. Yeah. Yeah, I had lower jack. Um, and uh, sort of getting, getting things talking to jack channels <laughs> and uh, sending audio um, yeah. and, and all that sort of stuff. What, what kind of work is going on as far as integrating this into like a DAW? Um, right. So uh, the question is about how do we integrate Uterpia into some bigger system uh, that might rely on some other uh, modules that are external to Haskell? Uh, so specifically, one thing is called Jack, and this is lets you send uh, signals within your computer from uh, one program to another. So Uterpia has really great integration for sending wherever you want, um, and in many cases, places you don't want it going. Um, so, but yeah, that's uh, easily supported. Um, I actually use Jack. I'm running Uterpia on a Linux machine. Uh, so I'm using Jack to keep everything sorted out. Uh, in the Uterpia studio, we've got four-channel audio, um, and it's all Uterpia can go to that mixer, and you can mix it on the actual hardware if you like, if you prefer to do that. Um, so there's some functions built in. I'll open up uh, just briefly the demo again. Uh, Right, so here we have output device. Uh, there's only one on this computer, but uh, <laughs> if you had lots of output devices, you could be sending them wherever you want, and one of those devices could just be the jack port. Uh, that's the way I do it. Um, it seems to work quite well. What about jack transport? Is there, is there a desire or a need for that? Um, yeah, I mean, you can do a lot of stuff with other programs. We're trying to constrain ourselves to work entirely in Haskell. The kind of, kind of the spirit is that everything should be possible. Um, and so we're forcing ourselves to face problems that other people have already solved uh, in other languages. Yeah. OK. Uh, what do you mean by space, uh, key space as in? Oh, uh, yes. So this is based on Kulita. So I'm not super familiar with the work. Um, but she's, uh, Danya has synthesized Bach chorales, which use, of course, uh, major minor uh, seventh chords. I know she has sus six support. Um, I don't think, I think what you saw here was only major and minor simply because uh, there's no additional context, so it would be difficult. We're only generating chords, so it would be difficult to infer a more complex chord that we have a good justification for playing, you know, a C sharp 9 sus 6 chord. Uh, oh, uh, what do you mean by user override? Oh. Uh, You'd have to build, if you wanted to, you, the user to be able to override the music synthesis system, you'd, you would be able to do that, but not in this system here. That would have to be its own module in Uterpia that you would have to write. One more very quick question, and then we can move on. Okay. So just a quick question. Who is in charge of the, the real time parallel? Is it Ascal in charge of yeah. the, the clock? Uh, yep. Uh, this is 
uh, I mean, there is a clock within the MIDI synthesizer, uh, but we are sending these MIDI events to the synthesizer ourselves within Haskell. Yeah, we're trying to keep that within Utopia for right now. Okay, thank you. That's, thanks for that.